Eel Wiseman is an architect, a professor of visual cultures, and the director for the Center of Research Architecture at Goldsmiths, University of London. Wiseman is credited for the documentation of new urban military tactics used by the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, in their war against the Palestinians in 2002. He also studied many other urban planning techniques used in Israel. His scholarly, scholarly essay, Lethal Theory, goes into how the IDF penetrated the Palestinian city infrastructure of Nabulus using what is referred to as inverse geometry. Lethal Theory was created by Commander Aviv Kokavi of the IDF as a reorganization of the urban syntax by means of micro-tactical inverse actions. He did this by having his soldiers move through the urban hierarchy of structures through their party walls, ceilings, and floors, rather than their streets, alleys, courtyards, and doors. With this technique, he took urban warfare to a new level through technology and the reinterpretation of spatial boundaries. Kukavi thought that space is how one interprets it to be. Areas of circulation, like alleys, are seen as efficient and safe places to architects. However, the IDF sees these areas as forbidden because that is where the enemy awaits to kill them. The Palestinians barricaded their entries, booby shot their doors and alleyways, waiting for the Israelis to attack. This is why the IDF took it upon themselves to make their own spatial areas of circulation to surprise the Palestinians. The initial attack on Nablus occurred on April 3rd, 2002, when the IDF cut off electrical, telephone, and water connections to the city. They positioned snipers and surveillance at high points and surrounded the city. At this point, they swarmed the city. This is when a number of small units entered the city from all directions simultaneously. Swarming has no form, but moves as a cloud with no linear movement as it attacks the enemy. It is a type of inside-out attack of spatial qualities. Once inside the initial walls, they used the walking through walls method to eliminate the enemy. A Palestinian architect estimated that over half the buildings in the town center had roots running through them, anywhere from one to eight openings in each. These paths created cross routes extremely difficult to read and they seemed chaotic, thus enforcing the idea of swarming implemented by the IDF. The swarm maneuver was just one of the tactics used by and defined by Israeli's overall plan, which resembles a square of opposition. This square is a set of logical relationships between military tactics and guerrilla tactics. The plan tried to stray away from old-fashioned military techniques to a plan of more movement through space without borders and barriers. Since the movement is sporadic, these operations could take up to a few weeks to complete. The operations could often not be monitored because of the lack of views from aerial surveillance. This is because of the thickness of the urban fabric. Lethal theory is a complex system of interdependent networks. It is a dynamic, tactical, spatial battle that requires coordination with soldiers, actions, and objects that all influence the local population. The IDF achieved this by an inversion of the typical urban syntax. Elements that were once used for circulation, such as paving stones and carriages, became barricades. Elements that were once barricades, such as walls, became routes of circulation. This makes private areas public and vice versa. The once safe sheltered home is now public and being bombarded by soldiers, while the public courtyards seem private because they are so desolate. In order to make this inversion possible, soldiers use various technologies to help understand their position in the dense urban fabric at all times, and to be aware of the enemy's position. Even with the proper cooperation of both soldiers and technology, fighting in the city can be incalculable and messy at times. Urban warfare methods, like the lethal theory, depend on technologies that can see through a wall before physically breaking through it. An Israeli company, Camaro, developed a handheld imaging device that uses thermal imaging with ultra-wideband radar. The radar device produces 3D renderings of life behind the barricades. In order to secure an accurate shot, bullet heads are upgraded to 7.6 millimeters from the standard 5.5 millimeters. These bullets are capable of penetrating wood, brick, and adobe with minimal deflection. After safely securing the opposite side of a barricade, it is then time to break through using explosives or large hammers. A hose formed followed by the use of stun grenades or random fire. Kokavi's intention in the battle was not to capture and hold ground, but to quickly enter in order to kill members of the Palestine resistance and get out. Tactical groups formed for fighting in urban settings were called International Shadow Worlds. Shadow Worlds were military urban research institutes and training centers that were established to rethink military operations in cities. These studies are similar, if not identical, to architectural academics. Military Shadow Worlds are currently generating more intense and well-funded urban research than conducted in architectural institutions. In fact, 
Urban military tactic books and architectural books overlap in many spots. This generates a problem between theory and practice. Critical theories in architecture are being used by the IDF with a focus on conceptual frameworks. The IDF claims these studies have been instrumental in the development of urban warfare tactics. In conclusion, the lethal theory deteriorated the boundary lines of the urban fabric and home. Again, space is only an interpretation and its movement through the city reinterprets architectural elements and the city itself. The IDF thinks they can win a battle through the reorganization of a city, not necessarily the destruction of it. The theory will clearly influence some architects to be more conscious of the design of urban fabrics to compensate for battle.